Our work at Friends and our contribution to marine conservancy with our partners would not be effective without scientists on our team. Tina, I already mentioned you, but I want to say a little more. She has 30 years of experience in place-based conservation and serves on multiple San Juan County and salmon recovery boards. She works statewide to inform shoreline science and in the last month, her Friends of the San Juan's work has taken her to seven islands in the Coast Salish region. Uh, we appreciate that commitment, Tina, and all you do with the rest of our dynamic Friends of the Juan, San Juan's team and board. Take it away on our second dive. Great. Thanks so much, Eva, and thanks everyone for joining us. I was fortunate to spend the first 20 years of my life on Martha's Vineyard Island in New England, and now I've been fortunate to live on Orcas Island for the next 20. I feel most at home in the islands where a strong sense of place and a connection to the environment are such an integral part of our community. After 20 years as Friends Science Director, I've learned that here in the San Juans, our marine shorelines are our community's superpower, and I'm so lucky that it's my job to help keep them healthy. Did you know that if our 400 plus miles of marine shoreline were stretched out along I-5, they would reach from Eugene, Oregon to Vancouver, British Columbia. This concentration of marine shorelines are what makes the San Juans so unique for people and for nature. Here's a fun illustration that my coworker, Catherine Dietzman, Friends Science and Education Coordinator, made of our food web. Our shorelines are an essential part of the base of the marine food web that moves all the way up to the southern resident killer whales and humans too. Our beaches and eelgrass meadows, where forage fish like herring, surf smelt, and sand lance lay their eggs, these little fish feed the salmon, the seabirds, the marine mammals. Over the past 20 years, Friends has documented and increased protections for over 100 forage fish spawning beaches, eelgrass and bull kelp habitats, and coastal forests. As we all know, these shorelines are critical habitat for the baby salmon that come to our islands from rivers across the Salish Sea. And they're also essential feeding habitat for seabirds who fly daily from their nests in old growth forests on the Olympic Peninsula and on Vancouver Island to catch a mouthful of fish to feed their chicks. I could go on, but you get the idea of how productive our local shorelines are. Like we'd like to say here at Friends, Southern resident killer whales need salmon Salmon need forage fish, and forage fish need healthy beaches. Today, we are excited to be spearheading a comprehensive 20-year health assessment of eelgrass. In collaboration with Drew Harvell and her team of eelgrass disease researchers from Cornell and Friday Harbor Labs, along with eelgrass experts from the Washington Department of Natural Resources, we are taking a closer look at eelgrass habitat to understand the distribution and depths across the county most importantly, how they've changed over the last 20 years, and also integrating and looking at what role eelgrass wasting disease might be playing in the declines we're seeing. In addition to remapping eelgrass using toad underwater video, we've had the good fortune to be out collecting eelgrass plants through snorkel surveys with labs researchers and community science volunteers. Plants from 10 sites on San Juan, Orcas, Lopez, Shaw, and Waldron are being analyzed for disease as part of this countywide eelgrass trend assessment. Unfortunately, seagrasses have been struggling globally as well as here in the San Juans, and eelgrass wasting disease is just one part of the complex puzzle. This research project, this collaborative effort that builds off our earlier mapping efforts that friends completed in 20 years ago will help us to identify where are those resilient places that are the most important to protect and conserve. So please stay tuned for our research results in the coming winters. Using research projects like these, we work from science to action, protecting and restoring. In the past 15 years, we've led close to 20 shoreline restoration projects with a suite of fantastic partners such as Washington State Parks, the San Juan County Land Bank, the Tulalip Tribes, many local contractors, and many, many dedicated private landowners. Restoration actions have removed roads and bulkheads, unburying the beaches below to support forage fish. We've removed overwater and toxic structures from eelgrass to allow the light and the clean water that these flowering plants need to thrive. 
We've removed culverts to reconnect tidal waters and the species that inhabit them with coastal wetlands. In 2020, at our Susha Salt Marsh Restoration Project that you're viewing right now, it was amazing to witness the high tides come into the marsh. It had been nearly 100 years since the tide had been able to flow freely, once those last bits of the road, culvert, and armor had been removed. And just this month, we removed 225 feet of a creosote bulkhead and many, many, many dump truck loads of fill from a beach on nearby Shaw Island. Sand and gravel beach nourishment will be placed soon and we'll plant dune grass with the Islands Conservation Corps crews in a few weeks. And looking forward, we're on track to restore four more beaches by 2025. While we are grateful for the restoration or the state, excuse me, for the state and federal grants that fund these restoration projects, my point here is that these projects would not be possible without the support of you, our members. In addition to restoration, here at Friends of the San Juans, we also work hard to protect the intact healthy places using policy, permit review and enforcement of existing laws, and of course, using education. A key part of protecting shorelines in our community is empowering residents as stewards. Towards that end, we have completed expert site visits with more than 450 waterfront property owners, and we've reached thousands more with direct mailings, workshops, and events. And many, many of these owners have taken actions to protect and restore their own properties. So our superpower shorelines, located in the heart of the Salish Sea, support these stunning habitats and creatures but also our very identity as a community of islands. These special places are also a good reminder that things can vanish if you don't pay attention, if you don't actively work to understand and protect them.